right, we are back. I was getting well into that music. Uh, thank you very much for joining myself. I'm Tom Deacon. A pleasure to be back again for the Nitro Nights Stories, a brand new guest. Last time out, uh, I was in my lounge slash office. Uh, I was with Car Matrix. Uh, this time I'm back repping the Christmas based jumper. Uh, so there you go, a little bit of Batman and Robin hoping today's guest is doing exactly the same. If not, it doesn't matter. Uh, listen, we're on Twitch right now. Don't forget, overtake underscore GG is where you can get all of the latest information, including Clash of Racers 2, uh, which is happening on the 13th of December. But while we're here, don't forget to drop any question you like, because today's guest, I cannot wait to get him on. So let's just do that right now. It's the one and only Mr. TRL Limitless. Uh, great to have you on board, James. Uh, good evening. How are you doing? No, I'm very good. Thank you very much for having me on and can't wait for it. Yeah, um, listen, I'm loving the setup. Uh, I've gone for a very chilled out Christmas lights vibe. Uh, you've gone for your actual setup. I love this. Uh, is this where uh, you are putting together all of those brilliant lap times that you do? Yeah, this is where I do all my league racing. Um, I do move house next month, so we'll change a little bit. But uh, yeah, this is where all the magic happens. So yeah. Yeah, well, listen, man, I mean, it's great to have you on board. So much to get into. Uh, our lives really came uh, together in that moment. 2018, picked in the F1 Esports draft by Renault. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about your YouTube channel, the fact you've got so many subs. I, I even know that there's a plaque knocking about somewhere, but you're waiting <laughs> to put that up. Is that right, James? Yeah, still gathering dust in the wardrobe at the moment. So yeah, once I get a, although the room's nice and stuff, once I get a proper, proper dream set up, then I'll uh, find a good place for it. So yeah. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. Uh, also as well, I'm calling you James. Uh, which would you prefer, TRL Limitless? Or would you like me to refer to you as James Doherty throughout this chat? JD. People call me JD. JD. JD's the way. Yeah. That wasn't an option, but I will take it. Uh, JD, um, <laughs> listen, where do we start? Uh, first of all, how did you get into sim racing? Yeah, get into sim racing. Um, honestly, uh, I used to do kart racing, did it from the age of seven all the way up to 17, 18. Um, was fairly successful in it uh obviously did it for quite a number of years and eventually i couldn't continue karting anymore um, from the age of 18 i it, the problem with motorsport is just that the finance is just so so hard to continue you need a lot of funding as well as the sponsorship and stuff as well so i ended up going to university and yeah before that i was into f1 obviously because i did karting and stuff but i you know i played call of duty and stuff like that but i wasn't really a a serious player or anything at all. Um, and then by the age of, I got into it quite late compared to people nowadays, I'd say at the age of 20, um, that's when I started getting to Formula One, uh, started playing it. I didn't know really anything about like YouTube or anything at that point. I just played F1, um, played in like online lobbies, just chilled public lobbies and stuff and was apparently decent at the game. And then I got invited by someone to, join a league, which was TRL, which is the reason why my name is TRL Lumis, because it's for total racing leagues. So that was the biggest league back in the day. And I joined that and it's been league racing ever since. Wow. Uh, it's, it's great. I mean, there goes my next question, but thanks James. Uh, T L R L uh, limitless. Um, so that's an amazing journey and that's just the, the beginning, but what, what was it that drew you to, I mean, I know the karting you had, but. But when sim racing became an option, what was it really that you that you got a buzz from? Why, why did you enjoy it so much? Yeah, if I'm being completely honest, um, at that time when I was 20, was you know, I was at university. Um, there was quite a lot of stresses at university um, as well. Um, a lot of good moments. But for me, it was just a case of, it was, a, it was my escape from reality in a way. And that sounds a bit weird to say. Um, but it was just something I just loved doing where I could just forget the outside world um, and really just focus on that. And it just happened to be Formula One um, because that happened to be the game I was really good at. Um, and I basically just used that as a way for 
me to just get focused on things um and then the more i played it the more i fell in love with it um when i really didn't feel like i would at all and then throughout the years i think my drive even up to this day i think is getting more and more for it to be honest um and i think it's just not necessarily racing but it's just the need to compete against people i feel i'm a really really competitive person when i've been put in that environment and yeah just my buzz for just competing the highs and the lows which is you know what it's all about um i think that kind of not addiction but just just the pleasure and just the buzz of just going against people um it just made me just want to do it more and more and you know till this day it's the the passion is still there for it so i'd say it's really just to escape what i was going through at the time um and it's just made me a better person overall wow i love that um and i I think a lot of people watching this now and and on repeat uh after we finished our chat tonight on nitro night stories um they'll connect with that because especially this year 2020 people were using sim racing definitely as a way to escape and and kind of connect with people um did you make friends while you were you were competing online yeah no i think that is exactly what you just said um for me as a background only child no brothers and sisters as well being alone at university, I think that's exactly what it was. Um, it was just me going into a different world in a sense where I could connect with people. I've had friendships with people and relationships that are still as strong as they are to this day. Um, I, I was just fascinated that I could just jump on and I could just play with anyone around the world and just talk to them over a headset or something. It was just, that's definitely the part that I fell in love with as well. Um, and I think exactly during these times, the, the year that we've had this year, which has been obviously a bad year, but also a year full of new things that have come you know, with esports and gaming and stuff as well. I think this is just such a good way to really connect with people. Um, it really helped me increase my confidence um, because back then I really didn't have any confidence or anything whatsoever. Um, it was just a way for me to really be focused on something and really use it in a good way because i think if you don't have something to put your passion into then you can quickly um lose the skills and things in terms of real life and everything as well so it really really helped me just become a much stronger person overall yeah i i I know that lots of people are are felt that way as well and and it's interesting because there's a few questions i i I will be looking down (laughs) uh because i'm on twitch as well i'm on like so many screens which we've all learned we've all adapted um but this is something you've been doing for a while in terms of your youtube channel which i want to talk about but before that one of the questions we'll ask about your best league uh racing win that you've had uh but when you made friends, uh, just staying back, uh, not necessarily your uni time, but afterwards as well, did you make, because you said you made lots of friends through it, were there any other arch rivals that you made? Because you competed in lots of different leagues. So I'm curious to know, was there maybe a driver that stood out for you? Yes, friends, but really pushed you. Yeah, he's uh, still one of them to this day. It's Mr. Matthew Gallagher, X Mate G. Um, <laughs> he was a really, really big rival for me, um, and one of the reasons why I really pushed myself to that next level. Um, there were drivers like him, like Harry Jacks as well. He was a uh, one of the drivers from a Mercedes a couple of seasons ago, and, and one of the best drivers I raced against. But I think uh, me and Matty G, uh, we were both on the same device, the controller, so we didn't have the wheel in the back of the day. I didn't use a wheel for a long time. Um, but yeah, I think me and him had a kind of a, a brotherly kind of relationship where we really, really wanted to beat each other at all costs. But I think our personalities are that we're really competitive in the game, quite ruthless, but then out of the game, we're really, really good friends um, as well. So I think, yeah, that relationship is um, you know, still as strong as it is to this day. And I think, you know, I think we've seen how the different directions that he's gone, where well, I've stayed more of the competitive scene and he's gone the other way um it just shows what the possibilities are yeah definitely I, and, and i did tee you up there i was hoping you'd say matty g because he's definitely <laughs> been part of the f1 esports since uh day dot like right at the beginning uh in, back in 2017 i mentioned you joined in 2018 i've just seen a comment uh from philip who says trl limitless should join team quadrant should we just put that to bed uh it would be i don't know what a five would be but 
could, could it possibly happen? That's down to Veloce, down to Veloce and Quadrant. <laughs> I think Quadrant, uh, I think um, that's a great thing about this as well with esports connecting with the real Formula One teams. And I think they're one of the first teams that have properly executed that as well. I think just crossing the dimensions of real life and gaming, I think it just shows just how fun and enjoyable and how much you can grow from it. So um, hopefully I can feature in some of those things in the future. So yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for that question coming through. I just thought <laughs> we're just mixing it up a little bit. Um, also, uh, James, I, I, JD, I want to know uh, from you, where did the YouTube idea come from for you to just put out your videos, which are uh, you're talking about analyzing your previous races, um, almost like a how to at times. So so where did that idea come from? And obviously now over 160,000 subs, it's it's incredibly fantastic like it's brilliant to see how it's grown but take us back to the beginning of that why did you do it and and are you still hitting those reasons why you wanted to to get into it yeah the reason why i did it um i feel i was quite a bit of a late comer um to the pie of it i think i started my channel in 2013 i think um and i know people like ben and Ara who've done absolutely fantastic they started a little bit before me um my main reason really was just to upload my content um I didn't really see anyone else uploading their competitive highlights or the only people who did were people like Matty G and Harry Jackson, Noble 2909. And those two people were really my inspiration to do it. Um, not to compete with them, but just to, just to showcase what I thought I could do at the game. Um, and then from there, it's really turned into helping people reach their potential as much as possible. Um, but the main thing I think about my channel when I think hopefully I still do to this day and I feel like I do is just to really show people like the journey that someone goes through, um, just being a player. Um, if you want to be the highest level you could possibly can, um, just the highs and the lows. Um, that's why I love streaming so much because you get to see pretty much every single emotion, um, of what you do. And I just really want to give, because I think a lot of times where you're in esports or you're in sports, um, maybe even to form the one to a degree, it's not really relatable um, because a lot of those people can't do what you do. Whereas in this, they, they can, um, they can just get a controller, they can get a wheel, a screen, a PC or a console that can run it and they can have a go at it. And then you no, know, in the space of a few months or a year, they could be racing with a r real Formula one team in esports and stuff. And, I just want to show people a realistic perspective that I think maybe some influencers or channels, no matter what it is in gaming or real life, that they always show their best moments and making it look a bit too easy. Maybe um, for me, I always want to just show what what it's really like uh, on what the journey is to really just help motivate motivate people to become the best they can. So, yeah, it's uh, it's when I watch. Your videos, uh, which is funny because once you were signed by Renault in 2018, you start looking for names and and and, and you're like, oh, I want to know more about them because we had to interview you. Or and so to watch your videos and see where your your journey, I think it's brilliant. It's the anti Instagram. I decided to call it. Uh, I don't know if that is that all right for you. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just that showing the journey that you definitely go on. Um, it is is remarkable to, to, to watch from an outside. Um, do you think that's why it's been so successful? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I've been blown away how my channel's done. And I feel for me, it's, it's not about numbers or anything at all. It's all about people with the retention. And I feel with my channel that it's always been growing very naturally and organically rather than just in bursts and stuff because of certain things. I think it's just always had a really good retention and it's just grown really, really well. Um, yeah, I think it's just the case of people can just see what I've been through and you know what it takes and it, you, it's, it's not given to you on a plate and stuff as well. You really have to earn it, um, for your experiences and your commitments and your motivation and everything. And I really hope that it just motivates people, as I said, to really believe in themselves that they can do it so if i can do it then anyone can do it so yeah exactly uh there's someone on the on the on the twitch chat has always said authenticity and transparency which i i totally agree with that that was the word i was looking for watching your videos it's the anti-instagram in terms of it's really authentic we we root for you in, in your journey um 
I, I want to get to a, a few more questions before I do that. Uh, I first of all, want to ask when you type in your name, James, T R L limitless. The first thing that comes up is the word T R L limitless banned. Um, I feel like it would be rude of me in, in a fun way. Why, why is that coming up to, for anybody who doesn't know your story? Yeah, I'm not sure to be honest because I've, I've typed it in recently and I can't find it. But I think it's when you were talking about all authenticity and everything like that, I think sometimes that's like a good and bad thing as well. But that's something I'm not really afraid to show because sometimes I might appear to say or react in a way that's controversial potentially. And I think especially with live streaming, that's why I love it so much. It's you can't hide um, whatsoever. Um, what you see is what you get. It, I know I can't show every race when I win and stuff as well. I think you always see moments where it doesn't go in your way. And I think that's what I really want to try and motivate people by trying to show what the right reaction is. And sometimes I don't um, because no one's human and stuff as well. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of, for me, the most important thing for me is always just to try and be true to people who are watching me um, to not, do a fake persona or anything whatsoever. I always just try and like, if you meet me, if what you see is what you would be meeting with in real life as well. And, you know, sometimes that can hurt you in some ways, but other times I think that's what gets you to respect when you're just not afraid, afraid to show who you really are. So. Um, got a tweet uh, that came in. What was your best league race win? That comes from Dark on, on Twitter, uh, following up from when we were saying, hey, we're going live, let's get involved. Uh, so is there one moment your best league race win that stands out for you? Uh, my best league race win is probably uh, my first big one I ever did in, uh, it's called AOR. Um, it used to be called ARL back in the day. Um, it was in 2013 and that was against the likes of Matty G Noble, um, that was kind of like the Super League at that time or equivalent to almost like eSports, but for not the actual competition. Um, I think that one is probably my most memorable one. That was at Spa uh, Season 8 um, in the AOR, which I had Spa last night as well. So it's always been a very special track for me. Um, but I think doing that was, you know, I was trying so, so hard for so long um, to win in that league against that competition and always was just falling uh, just a little bit short. So I think that was the moment where I really, you know, I've started to believe in myself and the one that I'll never forget really. Oh, that is a great answer. Uh, Berner uh, asked, uh, your biggest league racing rivalry of all time. I think we covered that with Matty G, unless there's anyone else that, that stands out for you. Um, but a really interesting question here. Uh, CRG underscore KR1S says, JD, does that intensity and passion to win come at the cost of being looked as uh, a nice guy by some people? Yeah, I think kind of like what I was saying before, I think it comes with its pros and cons, really. Um, when you're a bit too passionate and a bit too intense and stuff at times, I think, you know, if, if you want to be successful, I think, and if you want to be, you know, especially in a competitive sport like this, I call this is, um, you've got to have that level of intensity and ruthlessness at times. Um, and, you know, in moments it helps because that's what you need to push yourself over the line but i think especially when you're streaming and on youtube and stuff as well sometimes when you can let it get the better of you you just got to try and control it in the right way sometimes when the chips go against you and you show it in maybe not the best way <laughs> maybe at times but um <laughs> yeah I, but again that's something that you've got to show that's something i'm kind of happy about in a way because i think that just shows a human element which i think some people try really hard to you know, train themselves around to not show and stuff as well like you know we have even real f1 drivers or real athletes or sportsmen and stuff as well where they're media trained to try and not show that with me i feel you know it's a pro and a con um but i think that hopefully that, that motivates people and in when it doesn't go against you it's just a case of just yeah, it's just something you have to learn from as well. But I think that's the reason why perhaps I have a respect um, and the reason why my channel's grown so naturally throughout the years because they actually feel like they're watching someone genuine all the time. So, um, I'm loving this, J JD. Uh, and I'm learning to, to get your name right, JD. Um, <laughs> because uh, even with Lando Norris, that Lance Stroll uh, collision that happened, he let the emotions come out because you're there in the moment. I apologized for it afterwards, but, but that's just human 
instinct and then the the, the media trained savvy side has to sort of um nip it in the bud quickly before you allow yourself to really to be expressive and, and, and emotional um there's a control in it uh, this question from julius uh, x says can you ask jd why it's so hard for him to stay focused on the latest races uh except the last one brackets um that's an interesting question i, I i'm reading that as it comes a do you think that you've lost concentration um and focus or or is it a misunderstanding how, how, how do you interpret that question um yeah i think my recent races um who means me in the game and stuff i think my recent race i won um so that was good <laughs> my last one i did which is good um but i think it's just a case where you have so many people coming through now who are really really good um and i think it's just sometimes again like the expectation you put on yourself i think it's just it's so easy to just let it get the better of you at times. And if you just miss that concentration for a split second, um, it can really, really punish you. And it goes for your attitude and your reaction and stuff as well. Um, I think again, especially when you're streaming all the time and you have, I'm very, very lucky to have a lot of people watching you and stuff as well. I think it's, that's one of the, the beauties and the dark parts of it as well. Um, sometimes it feels like you can't react but when things go against you, you sometimes when you've had that going for a while it's um it's very difficult not to not to show it but again that's something i'm kind of not proud of but something i'm not overly apologetic for um because i think it's just something where as if you do it in the right way then you get better and i think that's the whole point of my channel and the reason why it's grown the way it is um like my last race I did, for example, the races before that, um, had a very bad race last Friday, uh, without going into the details. Um, but then yesterday's race, uh, I won the race against a really, really competitive grid, um, which are really unexpected. So I think that's the beauty of competing and in sport and just watching people as well. And that's where you want to show to people, no matter how bad it gets, um, it can turn the complete opposite way around in less than 24 hours so you just always got to have that belief and determination so uh a quick question from fuller underscore f1 and it's the question that we often get asked on nitro nights and, and overtake underscore gg at what point do you move from pad to wheel um and other people have already answered on the twitch they're getting involved as well it's when you can afford it but what would be that moment for you james um, the moment for me is um, really want to want to step yourself up to that next level, um, especially with F1 esports. You know, when I was on the controller, I remember emailing F1 esports trying to get them to convince them to use the controller during it. Um, it it's just a case. I think it's just you got to do what you're happy with for a start. Um, but if you really want to make a career, if you want to be the new Yana Watmir, Daniel Berezne, Brendan Lee, people like that. Um, and you really want to have a go at it and you feel you've got the ability to do it, then that's when I would recommend really stepping yourself up to it. And you just got to make sure it's a decision that you're happy with um, and that you're willing to put in the time for it and you know, the, see it as an investment and stuff as well. Um, but I think a lot of people get deterred by that because maybe the cost or they see something like this and think, oh, how can I do that? But no, you don't need the best equipment. I think that's the best thing about sim racing as well is that, you know, you could have a wheel strapped to your desk, um, maybe a, one of the lower budget ones and stuff as well, and you can still reach the level of an F1 eSport driver's pace. It's just all about your perspective and everything as well. But I would say if you're really looking to compete in F1 eSports or in any eSports of a racing game, then that's probably the right time to do it. I suppose it comes under that motivation. What, why are you doing it and, and what sort of levels you want to get to? Uh, we'll talk about your motivation in a second, but let's go back 2018. I looked back at a couple of photos and you're right at the front uh, amongst all the other uh, potential drivers who qualified uh, to take part in the F1 Esports draft to get picked by an F1 team. Never been done before. It was happening there and then. You get selected by Renault. L let's talk about those feelings you had uh, on that day. And let's talk about your, your. let's call it, it, because it is your career in F1 Esports before we get to you managing. Um, so 
take us back 2018 you're about to be drafted you're still emailing uh f1 hoping that they'll <laughs> they'll put it onto a pad uh for you <laughs> but let's talk about it then jd let's talk about those feelings then yeah back then that was probably one of the most memorable weeks of my life um i remember and, and you'll remember as well uh, i think it was the case over seven to nine days or something like that um it was a very long uh, drawn out experience um, which was done very very well in terms of my thoughts um just going back to your previous question as well that was really no, I was only just switched over from, from the pad to the wheel because I knew if I got signed by an F1 team then <laughs> I don't want to have them to be learning the wheel whilst I'm being chosen by a team as well um but during that week I felt really good um really, really excited but honestly uh, I didn't think I would get picked um, on that day and I wouldn't have been too disappointed because that was, you know, I hadn't really driven a wheel before as well at that point. And I didn't want to be picked because of maybe some previous experiences and stuff as well. I wanted to be picked outright on what the feeling of the team was. So yeah, to be picked by Renault um, and then for everything that's happened from there is honestly yeah, one of the biggest life-changing moments for me, although I may not have forced it at the time, um, I was just thinking I just really couldn't believe it. And I just said to myself that, no, this is what I want to be involved in um, as a career, it, whether driving or or anything in esports. This has been my golden ticket, really. Um, so I was just, yeah, just pretty stunned and I just couldn't really believe it at the time, so. I could see that on your face, but just to add a little bit of backstory, yeah, we were down at Silverstone and we were going through all these opportune moments where you could say why you should be selected, how good you were on when we were cut, you were carting. I didn't get to cart. I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but you guys got to cart. Uh, you're being assessed on your interviews as well, what you would say. Um, so it was, it was, you were, the stress levels must have been pretty high and, and to get picked. What do you think it was that you had? You wanted to be selected on your merits, but for those watching now, they'll be thinking, have I got what it takes? What do you think was that that secret ingredient for you? Yeah, I think what it was, was maybe that the team saw how motivated I have been for, throughout my whole time playing F1. And just, I think to still what I have to stay to a degree is maybe what separates me from some other people is not not the talent or anything whatsoever i think it's just a case of always keep on going um to not give up and just have this resilience um and just always so determined to succeed I, i've always just been so so hungry to succeed and luckily that hasn't gone today um no matter what happens if i've had a really bad race or a really bad experience the next day i always do a reset um and always say to myself that tomorrow's a new day, um, a new opportunity. And I think it's just the, just the hunger and motivation to just compete against people. I, I always want to, I don't want to just compete against people and be bottom of the list um, in a way, as, as much as that sounds. I always want to, when I compete against someone, I want to, I want to win. Uh, I want to do the best I can. So I think maybe they saw the hunger in me and, knew that I would be doing everything I could to make myself the best I could, which I felt like I've proven in the past. So I think it's maybe my determination was the deciding factor. Uh, these are great sort of in any walk of life, anyone watching, it doesn't necessarily want to get to the level that, that you've been at, but want to just compete that determination and, and that drive that you have that hunger to, to, to be competitive and get the best results you possibly can. Um, will go a long way for people. What happened at Renault in that 2018? What happened in 2019? And let's get to 2020 with you managing an esports team. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's been a bit of a journey the last couple of years. Um, yeah, going into Renault, uh, into that first event, getting picked for the first event. Um, again, like I said before, I didn't really have much experience on the wheel. Um, but again, I just, I tried so so hard um and i feel i always gave a really good attitude for what i did um and the first event when uh, surprisingly so much better um than i thought it would um, managed to get fifth in the first race against the likes of <laughs> rasmussen or Berezne, which is you know, when you see that those guys compete today that's just crazy that, that it can even happen so yeah the first event was good with a fifth and an eighth um and then the second event didn't go too as well as our hopes but 
on the sea, I, I would still say at that point in my uh, league racing or just competing against people with the wheel, I wasn't at the level, um, certainly not at the level as I am now or in the last year or something as well on the wheel. Um, so that was a really big learning experience for me, but it was a really big learning experience of how F1 esports works uh, and just being involved in the world of it. And that just added fuel to my fight again that I just really wanted to either be a driver or be involved in it um in like managing a team or, or anything else I just wanted I just had such a buzz around that environment and around those people um so at the end of that season I think with my attitude and the relationship I had with Renault um despite you know I had a good result in a couple of races but overall um not on the level of you know, like Brendan or, or Berezne or anything like that, um, they decided to keep me on uh, as actually managing the team because um, I feel in the community, I've been around for a long time. Uh, I know most of the drivers, all the new drivers are here today. I feel I have a really good relationship with them. Um, and I feel I have a really good respect from them. Um, so I feel me being in that position, I think it'd be great for a team because I've been on the other side of being a driver um, and then I get to be, I get to know what the driver actually wants um, from a team because I think some people feel maybe having the best equipment or the numbers or more is better. Whereas for me, I felt like I had a really good idea of what makes the driver feel happy. Um, so last year uh, with Renault, um, brought in Jana Watmir. Um, he was my first pick for the Renault team. Um, saw his potential, um, kind of reminded me of myself when I was upcoming where I was getting those results, but not quite there. And then started getting those really good results. And I could just really see the hunger in, and motivation in him. Um, and having a runner background as well was pretty much a perfect fit for the team. So got him in, um, obviously having people like Simon Vigang, uh, Cedric Tomei, um, people I've known really, really well. And Overall, it was a, a pretty successful season. Um, it was a debut experience for those guys as well. Uh, debut experience for me, which I think I learned a hell of a lot during that time. Um, had race wins and poles. Um, just fell short in the uh, constructors. I think we came fourth in the end in the last round. Um, so it went all the way to the wire. Um, and yeah, overall, working with Team Vitality and Renault, it was, it was such a good experience uh, for me. Um, and again, I think it just it just kept on. There's new things each year that just keep giving me a motivation to continue and really pursue this as a, a dream career for me. Um, and then after that year, um, Alpha came knocking at the door for Lotche, who I was part of before, um, and the offer they give they gave to me, um, and just the opportunity for me to really grow um, was just something I just couldn't turn down. Um, so I joined that team was very fortunate to have Yano uh, come over to that team as well. And yeah, this year, uh, without spoiling too much, it's been a really, really good year. Um, we performed the best we've ever done as a team so far in, in Alpha's history and what I've done in esports and stuff as well. Um, I think we've shown with our experience and having the right package together what you can achieve. And Right now, it's just a case of me still learning, uh, the driver is still learning, and the team still learning as well. And yeah, this is just something I want to do for for many many years to come. And yeah, just absolutely loving it so far. I love that journey, JD. Uh, uh, when you were mentioning Cedric Tome, I was like, of course, because where the studio was set up. If you're looking at the studio, uh, sort of dead on, you'd be down in the bottom right. That's where Yano was, uh, and pre races i chat to yano hey yano you, you know everyone was sort of talking about yano Watmir being this this guy who'd had real life racing experience with renault and was now in the f1 esports world and seeing how he delivered with with cedric and and simon vigang uh, came through as well and you it was an exciting time but what, what is it that you were doing behind the scenes uh not just i guess with renault would be different to what you're doing now with Salva, but uh, sorry, Al Alpha Romeo, but you, you, what is it that you actually do with the drivers? Because I think people would be fascinated to know to know that. Yeah, I think with the drivers, I think um, obviously it was a good experience for me being a driver first first off with Renault. Um, what I try and do with the drivers, I make them feel uh, comfortable all the time and obviously making sure they have everything they need. 
But I think just them knowing the respect we have between each other um, is really, really important um, because I really want to be someone who's involved in what they do because I know exactly what it feels like where sometimes you might not be the highest on the priority list or maybe there isn't a structure around you as well. And you know, if you don't have those things and it can become quite demotivating. So for me, um, without giving away a full workout structure or pro a program or anything, um, the idea of what I try and do is to try and make it as efficient as possible um, to make sure the drivers don't get burnt out. Because I think a lot of uh, things in life or when you're trying to learn something like a language or, or anything at all, and I always describe the way we train as if you know, you're training a muscle in the gym, which is something I always bring up all the time. I think it's really important that you don't overdo it um, and you just have the right amount of volume and intensity at all times and knowing when to really execute that, to really raise that, um, I think is really, really important um, because I think for me personally, I think a lot of people feel fall into a trap that more is better. Um, so if you do 12 hours a day, then you're going to just go become a better driver, uh, better mentally as well and physically. Um, whereas for me, it's not the case of doing the least amount possible, but just doing the right amount and making sure you peak at the right time. Um, so when we practice together, when we have our schedules, we always make sure that we're choosing the right days to do it. Um, I always make sure when I'm talking to the drivers, it's about what they want as well. Um, I think, again, I think some team managers or, you know, in, in anything, in any sport, um, sometimes they might not like the program. It doesn't suit them. Um, I'm always quite flexible with the driver. So whenever we go into a session, I always say, look, no, what do you feel most uncomfortable on? What do you feel you need to work on? Um, we have a discussion about it and then we all agree on it. Um, because I think if you just dictate of what has to be done and stuff, then that's when maybe you lose a little bit of respect and a little bit of the motivation as well. So making sure it's structured, but flexible and, and just making sure we're efficient the way we, we do everything together. It, it, it's a great insight there because I think when you are a driver, you're looking at things completely differently and you want someone to help you like you're doing it. It, it, it sounds like you learned what you needed as a driver and every driver is different, but there's yeah. a fundamental, a foundation that you learn. This is what the drivers that I'm now managing and looking after are going to need. And you build from that because the fact that Yano has, has gone across to Alfa Romeo doing so well uh, in the competition, uh, you know, next week uh, on 16th, 17th, we'll find out if he will be the new champion, uh, which is very exciting. But you obviously have that working relationship. What, what do you, uh, where do you want to get to? With everything jd in terms of the motivation right now is obviously working with alfa romeo getting the best out of the drivers hopefully finishing first in a, in a constructors championship or you know already that you're gonna gonna be breaking the record because third for the last two seasons at alfa romeo but now you'll be definitely second is an achievement but what's next what's next for jd for me right now, um, what I'm doing is an absolute dream and the privilege for me. Um, I definitely don't want to be a driver at the moment. I think that's a different uh, kind of pressure. Um, and I think there's so many good people coming through uh, who are going to be the next superstars in the future as well. Um, so yeah, definitely not that. Um, but what I'm doing right now, managing this team is honestly uh, the, the dream role for me right now. Um, just becoming more experienced in it. I learn more myself, um, learning how to do other things within the role and, and everything as well. Um, not just on the performance side, but on that marketing side and social media side and everything as well. Um, for me, I just want to be involved in esports. Um, I want to be managing this team. And right now it's everything I really, really uh, could wish for. So right now our main focus for me is to win the constructors uh, and the driver's championship with Alpha in our first year of myself and Yano there together. I think that would be uh, really, really awesome to do that. And I think that uh, we've managed to move that relationship over from Renner to Alpha very successfully um, as well. So I think the next thing for me is I don't want to think too far ahead. I just want to be focused on the task at hand right now. Um, but for me in the future, I just want to make sure I'm involved in this uh, for as long as possible, as long as I'm motivated to do it. and 
you know, either if that's managing a team or being involved directly with F1 esports themselves and in terms of the structure and everything as well, then yeah, just being involved is a well one right now. Uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, you and Yano, it's, it's, it's paying off. So may that continue next week. Uh, and, and something else you, you mentioned earlier on about the, the need to, honestly, people do not understand the pressures between the time frames, especially in November, you need three circuits. You need to be an alien on ready to go. Uh, there was not much of a turnaround in terms of time. So I'm sure you were incredibly busy in trying to make your drivers, Danny uh, and Yano, as comfortable as they possibly could be with, with Dominic Hoffman uh, waiting in the wings. Um, I did actually want to ask you about that. How important is that third driver for the team setup? Uh, and I ask you that before I get to a couple of questions uh, from the live chat. Yeah, I think having who you decide as the full roster is one of the most important decisions um, that you can make, especially for the pro draft for the F1 esports. Um, for me, I don't like to call it a third driver or anything at all because I think everyone should, you know, if they show their commitment, everything as well, then for me, they have the opportunity to to take part. Um, but for us, I think obviously with Yarno uh, and Danny being a previous constructors champion and no, securing the most points in F1 esports history as well. Um, it was always going to be difficult for whoever who came into our team um, to maybe get that opportunity. So having Dominic in our team, he's been a huge, huge part of our team, along with um, our drivers such as Matthias and Ethan, our development drivers as well. Um, the reason why he fits so well, they fit so well, and, and especially Dominic, is that, uh, that we just have that respect Um I think that's just a huge thing. We have that communication, um, that authenticity. It's um, it's really, really important that we're really transparent with each other um, and just having that experience that he brings to the team as well. Um, just making sure we have people in the team, I think it's really important that we have people who are selfless, um, not trying to potentially go after their individual goals, um, if that's fair to say, um, but having people who really care about the overall result of the team and he fits into that so perfectly because he's got the experience he's got a great relationship with Yano and myself um and he's just so good at all looking at all the details and just communicating that as well so he's been a without him um there would be some things in the race that could have gone very differently so he's been a really big part of us yeah, uh, I bet he also mentions how he did in the karting back in 2018 during the uh, <laughs> drafting. I'm sure he mentions that to you because I believe, if I'm, my memory serves me right, he didn't get picked in 2018, Dominic Hoffman, but he did win the karting, which I think he told everybody. He even brought his own helmet along, which is commitment. There is a man who's committed, <laughs> JD. Um, all right, we're talking about that teamwork. The Constructors' Championship is is where that $750,000 is. We see that teamwork with uh, uh, Freddie Rasmussen and Marcel Kiefer, that one-two that only happens every now and again in F1 Esports. So I, I totally get it. I know where Alfa Romeo are at. I want to know a little bit more about you. And, and this one's quite a difficult question, but Philip asks, uh, JD, what are your thoughts on people shaming on Esports saying it's just a game? Uh, when we've heard you talk about commitment, motivation, the skills you've learned in life, how do, if anyone was to say that to you now, uh, JD, and, and your development as a person and in your career, what would you say? For me, it's um, no matter what you do, I think you, if you want to reach the top level when anything you do, if it's a sport, if it's a skill uh, you want to do, I think... Uh, what, what I've gone with my channel and how it's gone, the direction it's gone, the opportunities it's given, I think you've got to respect um, what everyone does um, because you've got to have the organization, the discipline, uh, the motivation. You've got to have all those skills in, in order to make it an esports. I think, you know, it's, it's such a hard thing um, to do because there is so much on the line and there are so many factors um, that can swing in a different direction. Um, the technical difficulties, the equipment you use, uh, the pressure, um, and arguably when you're competing in esports, the room for error is so much less than if you were driving for real in real life as well, um, because the level of precision is just, it's just times by a thousand, um, to do it. So I think 
to be at the very best in in esports or in, in any esports that you do is just it's not something you can just jump on and do. Um, you have to be spending years of dedication, and you just got to have the right mindset. And I think you see the people who do well in esports and, and just in any skill or anything in life. And I think that's that's the whole point of what I try and illustrate to people or convey to people is that you've got to. If you have those skills and you can achieve anything else you want to achieve, um, because if you get to that level, then you have to have that discipline, that motivation, organization. It's going to help you for your, your entire life, um, to be honest. And I think we've seen that with all the very, very best players and all the esport drivers and all the esport players in the world and anything you do. I think if you achieve something at the highest level, then it's just going to set you up for life as a person, to be honest. So. Amen to that, JD. Uh, loving the questions that are coming through. Uh, always in F1 esports, I get asked this a lot and I don't even race and it's it's the idea that I host this for the last four years. Money always gets talked about uh, in esports. I, I want you to kind of ask, um, answer this however you want. Uh, Joe to Galore says, uh, uh, JD, what's your favorite track? And then goes in on, do you get paid to be a manager? And I know in esports, the bigger the event gets, the bigger the the profile of of uh, this title gets bigger. Uh, people need to to get paid. They need to make a living. Uh, so you can answer that however you want. But in terms of you, obviously want and many other drivers, you're putting so much time in it. You want to know that you can add as much time into into what you do because finances are looked after. But how do you see that? that um, arrangement well, first of all Silverstone's my favorite track so that's a very easy one to answer <laughs> that's the easy question done no <laughs> mucking about now the hard one. um yeah i think with that um the first thing i would say is that when you go into anything and you know me going into this and i'm very very happy to be honest and stuff as well um i think when you first go into this and anything you have a passion for uh, and you want to do for the rest of your life, I think you've got to go into it for the right reasons. And that's because you love doing it. Um, not to say you don't do it for not a reward or financially or anything at all. But when I first went into it, I, I wasn't getting uh, rewarded in any way apart from um, just my own satisfaction. Um, and I'm not saying that's the way that it should be or anything at all. But I think that's the first element that you've got to have within yourself. You've got to do it because you love to do it. Um, and you want to succeed and determine yourself in it. Like with my YouTube, I didn't get paid for, for years or anything at all, or even think of it, to be honest. So um, with F1 Esports now, I think um, in terms of that reward, I think we've seen with the F1 Esports raising from, I think, 500,000 last year to 750. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a million next year. Um, I think people are starting to see the popularity and the benefits and like we discussed as well of how it can change you and the opportunities that you get to work within i think it's something that can't be avoided now that you are going to get rewarded um as you would do if you're working in you no know, in in any successful job that you do i think people are taking it a lot more seriously now um, it's just not a game anymore it's people's lives it's the it's their livelihood and it's now, people like Jan Opp and Daniel Bresne, um, this is their job. This is this is all they do. Um, all they do is practice for these three months of competition um, at the moment, which you know, could change to many more in the future. But you know, I think people are starting to recognize how the impact is, is you know, that it's having on the communities, such as the virtual GPs or the expedition races, um, not the GPs, everything like that, and just a lot more people are becoming a lot more involved in it, like influencers, and they're seeing the impacts on their lives and on other people's lives as well. So I think now, now it, it really is being going to the stage where they are treating it as full-time careers for people and they're, they're being rewarded that way. So I, so I think that's the right direction to go. Uh, a legend for answering that question, because uh, it's difficult talking about uh, money and anything, but you're, you're spot on. You, you're dedicating your life to something. You do it because you're passionate about it. And if there's a way of surviving to continue doing what you're doing, of course, everyone's going to want that. And um, long may it continue. And I like the idea of a million 
because uh, 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 I sometimes struggle saying a million when we're live on the F1 Esports uh, <laughs> Pro Series. I'll be like, a million, a million. Um, listen, JD, you've been amazing answer, answering the questions. I feel like I've got to know you even more now. Um, and, and one final question uh, as we wrap things up. How long will you continue to do league racing? That's the final one I, I want to know on it, <laughs> because I imagine you will continue to do it if you can fit it in your schedule and because you love it. Yeah, I always think about that quite a lot um, because, yeah, people don't know how old I am. I'm 28 at the moment, so I've been involved in it for a long time. Um, and for me, the simple answer is for as long as I enjoy it, um, the long as I enjoy it. And, yeah, of course, if I can fit it in as well. Um, yeah, it's those two factors, really, if I just have the time for it and the long, as long as I have the motivation and the, and the drive for it. Um, because, honestly, I, I love doing it. And, you know, some people, as I said one of your questions that it's just a game or they don't understand the stuff as well um for me it's just something that i just absolutely love to do i love to compete against people i i look forward to it like it's a real grand prix for me um and then that's why i feel i've helped hopefully help people um them develop their passion for this as well being in f1 or esports or gaming as well that you can make a real career out of this and the opportunities are just you know 10 years ago when I, or eight years ago when I was competing in a league that the only thing you can win is a key ring or something like that. You couldn't even go in an F1 team. So now, <laughs> yeah, now like the opportunities that you can go into it's, um, yeah. But I think the number one thing for me is always making sure you want, you actually want to do it. Um, it's not a chore for you. And when it gets to a stage where it feels like I have to do it for a job, then um, that's probably when I would then question myself if I should continue. But as long as I have the time and the passion, then who knows when it will finish. Mate, long may it continue. What a real delight it has been to uh, to, to, to have you over, really, uh, and everyone else who's been watching uh, in the lounge slash office. Uh, the, the right question would be to ask how many key rings uh, do you own now from winning uh, races? But uh, we'll save that for another day. I can see exactly why you got picked by Renault. I can see why you have your your subs on your youtube channel the drive the passion uh the eloquency in which you talk about it, it is there for everyone to see so listen um i will uh, be on the chat uh, where people can go and check you out uh, jd i hope you've enjoyed being on nitro night stories this evening no it's been an absolute pleasure no keep on doing what you're doing i've been wanting to come on for a long long time and no it's been an absolute honor for me so thank you so much uh, a pleasure. It is always weird talking, uh, 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 I find, talking about yourself, but everyone's enjoyed it. Uh, everyone who's watching as well, uh, overtake underscore GG. Uh, this is where the Twitch, where we will have the Nitro Night stories. What a delight it was to have TRL Limitless on a show, none other than James Doherty, aka JD. That's his name. That's how he wants to be referred to from now on. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Nitro Night Stories.